performance of contract what do we mean by performance or what do we not mean by performance and when we are saying performance what we have to perform so as the name suggests performance performance is something that you have promised and who promises the person who promises we call him promisor so it is the discharge or performing the obligation doing the part acting on what you have promised as a promisor that is what do we mean by performance but what happens when we perform and when we don't perform like when the promisor performs or when he doesn't perform right so if he doesn't perform that is something called as breach that we will be looking after in our pro most probably next class but first we need to understand what do we mean by performance if not perform then it is breach but what is performance right so performance of contract means fulfilling of the respective legal obligations created under the contract by both the parties to the contract right so it is fulfilling of the respective legal obligations whatever obligations it has been created under the contract right because of the promise whatever obligation you are supposed to do some things that you are supposed to do doing those things fulfilling of those respective obligations or duties created under the contract by both the parties okay we said promisor but at the for something or the other both the parties are promisor like one party is promisor for doing something let's suppose the classic example that we have been taking like i promise to buy your car for rupees 1 lakh so here i am promisor i am promising something my promise is to buy the car and your promise is to deliver the car so again for both the things it goes hand in hand so according to section 37 the parties to a contract must either perform or offer to perform their respective promises both the things are there like if performing if not performed then just look at if the parties have offered to perform like if i offer to perform and you reject it then it's not my fault it will be your fault only so if we have performed that is fine if not performed then we need to check was there any offer to perform if there was an offer to perform that is also very well accepted and that we call it as anticipated performance that will look their respective promises unless such performance is dispensed with or excused under the provisions of the act or any other law if it is excused or dispensed by any act any provision of the act or any law then it is okay then we are not looking into performance but if not then both the parties are supposed to perform their respective promises or even offer to perform both the things are included so let's just break down this uh definition which we uh, which makes us to understand two types of performance one is actual performance and the other one is attempted performance so where a promisor performs his obligation or promise under a contract and the same is accepted by the promisee it is called as actual performance so make it's not just promise it is promisee so when the promisor performs his obligation whatever i was supposed to perform as part of my contract as part of uh, as duty part of my contract i am performing and you have accepted it that is called actual performance actually doing the thing simple but what do we mean by attempted performance attempted performance means i have attempted to perform but you haven't accepted it so where a promisor offers his performance but the promisee does not accept the same it is called as attempted performance offered by promisor but promisee did not accept it that is called attempted it was an attempt to perform but if not accepted then it is not fault of the promisor in this case it will be fault of promisee promisee cannot deny that the performance hasn't been done there was an offer to perform but you did not accept it right so in both the case both ways it works actual performance is also accepted attempted performance is also accepted right now let's just try to understand what happens what is the effect of performance when we are saying performance that means what whether it is actual or attempted so promisor is not responsible for non performance yes in either way the prom promisor is done with whatever he was supposed to do he is discharged from his obligation under the contract and promisor can sue the promisee for breach so that is also there if it is a, if there is a breach from promisee side right Prom because promisor has already done the part he has already performed either actually or attemptedly whatever it is he has attempted it or he has he has actually done it whether it is accepted or not but promisee if doesn't do if promisee breaches the contract then promisor can of course sue because i have done my part you haven't done so if there is any loss that i'm going to suffer because of you of course i can sue you that is what we are trying to say that is the effect of performance that is that is what happens right i am discharged you cannot ask me to do the same thing again because i have already done and if you are not doing your part i can of course sue you for that right that is the right that the promisor gets next who can offer performance of a contract when we are saying performance so there are certain one is it has to be offered by a promisor but then other things are also there promisor himself can uh, uh, perform 
promisor's agent can also perform his legal representative can perform and in certain scenarios even third party can perform and if it is joint promisor then any of the promisors can perform so let's look into all these conditions one by one so first it is promisor himself so there are certain scenarios where promisor himself has to perform other options will not be allowed so promisor himself if the contract involves personal skill of the promisor let's suppose i'm organizing a competition i organized some event and for that i called you to do a singing performance to sing in the performance and that is something that involves your personal skill now later on if you say that you know i will send my brother instead of me now i am not accepting it i i can always deny if i am accepting that is a different scenario but the contract that was there it involved your personal skill you were the one of whose performance i was interested in if you are not performing i am not interested so i will consider it as breach of contract because you are not performing it because that is something that involves personal skill so in that case promisor himself has to perform and second provision it says if it appears from the nature of the case that it was the intention of the parties to any contract that any promise contained in it should be performed by the promisor himself even if it does see if it involves personal skill then of course promisor himself nobody can do but nobody else can do it but other than that even if it is it does not involve personal skill but if it was very much clear from our intention itself we made it very clear that it should be promisor only i'm not interested to get the performance from anybody else then also promisor himself has to perform so these are the two scenarios where promisor himself can only perform then promisor's agent contract can be performed by duly appointed agent of the promisor provided the contract is of impersonal nature if it is of personal nature which involves personal a uh, skill or it is specifically mentioned that only himself promisor can perform so then in that case agent cannot do but otherwise agent can of course perform on the on behalf of the promisor then legal representative in case of death of the promisor before performance of the contract legal representatives of the deceased promisor can perform the promise unless there is contrary intention contrary intention means either it was of a personal skill nature or if it was clear that only promisor can perform nobody else right that is also there then third party how third party if a promise if a promisee accepts performance of the promise from a third person right he can not afterwards enforce it against the promisor if instead of like me performing the contract if i ask somebody else to perform and you have accepted it already right like if i said i will buy your car for rupees 1 lakh now i'm not buying i'm asking somebody else to buy your car and you accept it right you have accepted it later on you cannot deny that you know i haven't performed i was supposed to perform but i asked somebody else to perform on my behalf and you have accepted it so that is what it says if a promisee accepts performance of the promise from a third person he cannot afterwards enforce it against the promisor so it implies that contract can be performed by third party if the promisee accepts the same it's up to the promisee if if it is see if it is my agent if it is my lr those are different scenarios lr will be if i am not there if i am dead then my legal representative would do it my agent if i am not able to do i will do it through my agent so that is there like lic agents i can give you the very basic example the contract that you are signing the insurance contract that you sign with li uh, with the lic agent that is the agent that is doing the job but you are signing with the company actually you are not signing with the agent so that is one example but in other than to if i'm asking somebody else to perform then it's up to the promisee if you are accepting the performance then only it can be legal if you have accepted then you cannot deny also that is also there but it uh, totally depends upon the promisee if promisee is not accepting then third party cannot perform right that is there then one more scenario is there for joint promisors so if there are joint promisors then what happens so in case of more than one promisor unless a contrary intention appears following rules are applied so there are certain rules in case of joint promisors what are those rules in case all the promisors are alive contract has to be performed by all the promisors jointly right all the promisors can perform it jointly in case of death of any of the joint promisors contract must be performed by surviving promisors and legal representatives of the deceased promisors that is also simple if one of the promisor dies then his legal representative along with other promisors will do it in case of death of all the joint promisors 
contract must be performed by the representatives of all of them jointly simple if it is joint promise or all of them will perform if one dies then his legal representative along with others if all die then all uh, the legal representatives of all these promisors will do it jointly right that is what do we mean by joint promisors under section 42 to 44 now who can ask for performance this was who can perform but performance will be done only if somebody asks to do right and if it is specifically mentioned even if it is not asked then also performance has to be done but who is the person who can actually ask to get the performance done so generally only a promisee can demand performance of promise yes that is there but in case of death of the promisee unless a co contrary intention appears in the contract legal representatives of the deceased promisee can demand performance of the contract provided the contract is of impersonal manner yes if it was personal nature then promisee cannot ask even promisers cannot perform but if it is not of personal nature then promisers legal representatives can also perform and promisees legal representative can ask for the performance that is there third party can also demand performance of contract in some cases for example beneficiary of trust so there are certain scenarios where third party can also demand if third party is getting some benefit out of it so that is the one example that that is given over here for beneficiary of trust right so it is the promisee who can uh, demand for performance and if promisee is dead then promisees lr can also ask for performance unless otherwise it is made specifically that nobody can nobody else can ask for performance other than promisee so that is a different scenario if you're putting a condition otherwise the loss is promisee or his legal representative in case promisee is not there and sometimes third party can also demand right now in case of contract where there are joint promises following rules apply so as we see as we have seen in case of joint promisors it is uh, all the pro promisors or uh, uh, legal representative of the deceased joint uh, jointly with other promisors or in case of death of all all the joint promise uh, all the legal representatives of joint promisors they can perform but what in case of promise same same thing so in case all the promises are uh, uh, in yeah where the joint promises uh, again here it is written as promise or it is not in case all the promises are alive performance can be demanded by all of them jointly in case of death of any of the joint promises performance can be asked by surviving promises and legal representatives of the deceased promise right in case of death of all the joint promises performance can be demanded by representatives of all of them jointly so here some mistakes are there everywhere it is written as promises promises but it is promise so I will just make this correction when you are actually looking at the notes. I believe you are referring to the notes also which I have given along with the scores. So make sure that uh, just check uh, most probably I will just do the correction and the notes that you are getting. I will do uh, I will put the corrected spelling. So it is promisee. So sa same thing it's not something different. Just like the promisors promises are also doing the same thing. If all are alive all can demand together. If one is dead the LR of the dead and the rest of them can jointly ask. And if all are dead, then uh, the LRs of all of them jointly can also ask for performance, right? That is what it is. Simple, not that difficult, I believe. Now, next thing is time and place of performance of contract. So in some cases, what happens? We see, we have seen that who can, what is performance and what happens up because of performance, who can perform and who can ask for performance. These things we have seen. But what about when to perform and where to perform? That is also there, right? What about time? What time to perform and which place to perform? That is also important. So we need to look into those conditions also, time and place of contract. So when no application is to be made, like this is the first provision from section 46, when no application is to be made by the promisee and no time is specified, if nothing is specified, then what happens? In situations where there is no time period specified for the performance of the contract and the promisor has to perform the contract without any request by the promisee, right? If there is no mention of time and place or anything and there is no mention as such that promisee has to ask and sometimes it is mentioned that you have to perform only when you are asked to perform. So if nothing like that is mentioned then in such a case the promisor must perform the contract within a reasonable time. So if the time is not mentioned then something within reasonable time and no application has to be made. Here reasonable time means a fair amount of time that is required to be uh, required to do something conventionally conveniently and as soon as circumstances permit. So it is like something that you consider reasonable, something that you consider viable, something that you consider normal in that time frame you have to perform right this is section 46. Now other uh, as per section 47 the other condition is time of place is not specified but 
no app uh, but uh, application is to be made by the promise event then what is the difference between the when no application is to be made by the promise and no time is specified here what we are saying when time and place of performance is specified right it is specified but not sup not to be supposed to be made an application by the promise here neither specified nor application is required here it is specified but application is not required so when the time when the terms of the contract say that the promisor has to perform the contract without any request by the promisee on the place specified by the promisee and on the exact date specified by him in case no specific time is mentioned then the promisor should deliver the goods during the usual hours of business that is that this is actually uh, the part coming from uh, when it comes to place it is generally for the uh, sale only so it is coming from the sale of goods act so delivery of goods so nothing is mentioned then usual business hours if the time is not specified otherwise if no application is required to be made so it has to be done on exact time and place as it is mentioned on the contract right the terms of the contract are specific the no application promise will not tell you but you have already agreed you have already decided in the terms of contract itself that this is how and this is where uh, this is when you are supposed to perform so that is there simple not so difficult next provision says when performance is to be made on a proper place and time but an application is to be made by the promisee to the promisor for its performance so see what happens time and place you have already decided right but the time and place will not be active you are not supposed to perform until and unless you are asked for so the promisee has to ask for it so when the terms of the contract say that a performance of a contract has to be made on a particular day but the promisor will not do so when do so when the promisee makes an application to the promisor on that specific day for performance until and unless promise is asking for hence here since it is specifically mentioned in the contract that the promise has to request the promisor for performance on that specific day he must do so at the proper place and during the usual business hours as specified by him simple this is also simple when promise is asking then the promisor has to perform at some uh, regular proper place and at usual business hours right so that is there next where no place is fixed and no application has to be made to the promisor by the promise nothing is fixed so when the terms of the contract does not specify the place where the goods have to be delivered and that no request has to be made by the promise for the performance of a contract in such a situation it is the duty of the promisor to request the promise of a place reasonable to both where the goods can be delivered and then accordingly perform the contract so it is see who is supposed to perform it is the promisor so again it becomes the duty of the promisor to ask where to perform so that is accordingly there uh, if it is not fixed if nothing is to be specified or nothing is to be fixed then the person who is supposed to perform he should be taking the charge and asking where to perform so that is again it it, up, it is up to the promisor the place for the performance of goods implies both the delivery and payment of goods right that is also simple i believe not so complicated next it is when the performance has to be made in the time and manner as specified by the promisee like no application nothing a contract can also exist in which the promisor agrees to perform the contract in a manner and at a place and time prescribed by the promisee so that is also their section 50 example prankush son is in the hospital and needs money for his son's operation harshal owes money to prankur uh, and agrees to repay him at any place or time decided by prankur in this case prankur has the liberty to ask for the performance of the promise in any manner and at any, at any place or time suited to him so that is a classic example i don't think i need to explain anything further on this that is simple right so that is there now what happens if the contract is not performed at a time when the time is essential the consequence of failure to perform the contract at a fixed time when the time is essential in this scenario what happens consequence so time is an essence of contract time is an essence of contract means that parties to the contract have to perform their respective promises within specified time so if not performed then there will be consequences so if time is made in essence so when is time in essence of contract so if we are saying time is in essence and if it is not performed then there are consequences so when is time in essence when the parties to the contract expressly decide that time is essence of contract so when we are specifically making it clear that time is in essence it has to be performed within this time only after this not it is not going to be acceptable so in that case 
yes it becomes essence of the contract when the nature of contract requires performance of contract within specified time where delay operates as an injury so if the nature of contract itself is in such a way that it has to be performed in time if not then it is not going to be useful so like for example let's suppose we enter into a contract to buy and sell tickets for let's suppose ipl right so in this case time is a sense that before the ipl starts before the match starts we have to start buying and selling like selling tickets basically we can say buying from the vendor and selling it to the people so it has to be done before the match if we are doing it after the match it does not make any sense so it is the nature of contract itself that the performance has to be done within the specified time so in this case time is in a sense or otherwise if we make it spec expressly the time is in a sense then time is in a sense right so what happens if not performed section 55 of the indian contract act 1872 deals with the effect of failure to perform the contract at a fixed time when the time is essential if an act is not done within the stipulated time the contract becomes voidable right it is not valid or not void it is voidable at the option of the promisee provided the intention of the parties was that time should be of the essence of the contract so if it was essence time was in essence then only this will apply so it becomes voidable at the option of the promisee if promisee decides to accept then it's okay if it doesn't decide then it will be vo void so it is at the option of promisee contract becomes voidable thus whether time was the essence of the contract depends upon the intention of the parties and also on the nature of the contract this we have already seen but the performance will depend the validity will depend upon the uh, promisee right promisee can make the contract voidable either valid or void both the things now there is a case law for budrachand versus pets now what happened in a uh, budrachand versus pets 1915 the defendant promised to deliver an elephant to the plaintiff for the capture of a wild elephant as the part of kheda operations the contract provided that the elephant would be delivered on the 1st of october 1910 but the defendant obtained an extension of the time till 6th october and yet did not deliver the elephant till 11th right so first was the deadline to deliver then got an extension till 6th but still till 11th it is not delivered the plaintiff refused to accept the elephant and sued for damages for the breach now what happened it was held that the plaintiff was entitled to recover damages since it was proved that time was the essence of the contract since the defendant had tried to obtain an extension of time so here nothing was mentioned but since 1st of october was the deadline but he could not do it till 1st of october so he asked for an extension till 6th now when you are asking for extension that means you understand the time is important time is an essence it has to be done within time so you very well understood that by si if you were not able to do by first and if you are not doing then the contract would stand breach uh, like it would be breach of contract so you understand the time value that is why you have asked for extension right so if you have asked for extension then definitely the time is an essence and since you haven't performed in that extended time itself so uh, that stands your contract stands as uh, what we call it as um, breach this, this will be called as breach of contract and then there are something called as damages that we will look into what are damages and all those things damage is something like injury because of the not performance so since you haven't delivered there is some injury to the party right that is what it is so when time can be made essence by notice this is an example can time be made in essence by notice itself like we have seen time is in essence when it is nature of the contract or it is explicitly uh, what we call it as included but otherwise what happens when time is not the essence of the contract it can be made so by giving notice to the promisor now the notice must contain clearly that it wants to make time as the essence of the contract and the necessary implications if it is not adhered to so again promisee can make time as an essence by giving a notice and it should be clearly implicated that if it is not performed in time if it is not there then there will be com consequences that should be clear the promisor can also be intimated through the notice that default in the compliance with the terms will lead to the cancellation of the contract the party serving the notice must himself be bound by it so when you are saying that the time is in essence you also have to be adhering to the uh, uh, you know Uh, conditions that you are putting upon so the party like that means the promisee himself should be serving the notice so it has to uh be clarified to the promisor by sending a notice that now time is in essence and if not performed 
then it would be uh, leading to certain consequences and it will lead to cancellation of the contract right that is there because you are adding another term to a contract and uh, non compliance with that term will lead to cancellation simple now what is extension of time just as we see uh, as we just saw in the example of uh, ele the elephant case beth versus budra so what happened since one party to the contract cannot unilaterally vary the terms of the contract he also cannot extend the time without the consent of the other party through an agreement since we uh, saw that if the time is to be made in a sense then it has to be uh, agreed uh, you know uh, what we call it as both the parties need to agree unanimously you cannot uh, decide unilaterally you cannot decide not unanimously that means something different unilaterally means one party alone so therefore time for performance can be extended only by an agreement arrived at between the promisor and the promisee if both are agreeing to extend well and fine time can be ex extended also thus if one party ref uh, request the other party for extension of time but the other party does not communicate his acceptance the time cannot be extended in such a case so if you are asking for extension i should be agreeing to it so both the parties need to agree for time uh, extension of time right so this was it performance of contract